I think one of the most important aspects of trading card games is one that is the most understated, and that is giving the player an apt freedom of expression. Sure, we're all playing the same Yu-Gi-Oh trading card game with the same exact rule sets, that's what makes the game fair, but being able to bend those rules in a way that doesn't affect the game integrity while still giving the player freedom is something that is super important. Despite board orientation and where you place your cards though, there are tons of other ways to be able to express yourself in your favorite trading card game, and one of those ways is through some of my favorite little trinkets, and those are accessories. Today I want to share with you guys some of the accessories that I use when I duel that make me, you know, uniquely me. Let's start where all battles are played, and that is the playmat. Unless you're Christian Urena and you actually just don't play a playmat because you want to strike fear in the hearts of your opponent, every player has a playmat that they put their cards on. On a very basic level, it is a surface that's making sure your cards don't touch the table. On a higher level, you know, it's your domain. This little square you have is your battlefield. The playmat that I have in front of me here is a 1998 World Championship Spellground playmat. Spellgrounds are made of this distinct cloth that a lot of players uh, are very fond of, stitched from the back here. They're all made by Calso Brain Games, and they do incredible work just making these really distinct, lovely playmats that a lot of players tend to like to play on. One thing that most players note, though, is that the uh, the fabric has changed throughout the years since they've been out. I'm pretty sure they've been out since 93. And since 93, the cloth has changed multiple times. So unless you're getting the old school spell grounds, either these world championship ones are in that V1 fabric, or you have ones like the tan and the steel, uh, you're not going to be able to find that V1 fabric. Not to say the other fabrics aren't good, they're just not my cup of tea. Ironically, from what I've seen, spell grounds are mostly a Yu-Gi-Oh only accessory. I see a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players use these cloth playmats. Outside of that, I don't see many other card games really use them. In general, these cloth playmats have really exploded in price. The secondary market for these things are absolutely crazy, especially these world championship spell grounds. They are uh, worth a pretty penny. However, Costa Brain is not the only brand that makes these cloth playmats. There are also brands like Pyramid that do great work. Metamats does great work for custom people, as well as uh, Gem Playmats have also created exquisite cloth playmats that have really stood the test of time. So if you're looking to break up from the rubber, I think this is your best choice here. This is one that you'll see a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players use. Consider the playmat your base. The next thing that we have to put on the playmat is the heart of the board. That is the field center. With the release of the link mechanic, zone placement has become super important, which begs the question, how many able to use a mat with absolutely no zones and still be able to accurately portray the game state to my opponent. That's where field centers have come to play. Essentially just a marker to show that this is the center of the board. Anything that's placed around it is uh, where the zones are. Really you can use anything as a field center for Yu-Gi-Oh, but these things that I have in my hands here in particular are judge official field centers. The Yu-Gi-Oh judge program actually does give out a lot of fancy stuff here. These are see-through field centers, plastic. Uh, they're really, really nice, actually. Um, they've been releasing these since the start of the Link mechanic. I think the very first one was like a Link Karibo. These things normally come in like a plastic that Lost Arts come in. Uh, I'm really just weird like that, and I like to take them out because they fit perfectly in these little uh, one-touch cases here. I do get questions on what these are. These are called Ultra Pro One Touches these hard plastic cases here. Really nice for um, housing these little field centers, but also, you know, just single cards that you want to display. These are definitely the go-to for them. The judge program has given out a couple of these field centers. Uh, you just drop them right here into the center of the board here, and now the entire Yu-Gi-Oh board is built around the field center. You have your extra deck monster zones here, main deck monster zones, and then the uh, spell and traps down below here. Everything is pretty, you know, uh, easy to just display to your opponent just by having a single field center. Uh, this one is Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries. I really quite like this one. I also have a couple other ones. Vampire Sucker is my all-time favorite. This one has been hooked up from Tatsum overseas here, free Tatsum. He hooked me up with this one here. I love Vampire Sucker as a card, and I love the field center too. Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring is another super clean one. Very happy to own this one. And I also own a Dark Magician Girl, the Dragonite. I also own a Mardell, uh, but I don't know where that one is right now. I kind of just can't find it. You can use anything as field centers. I know a lot of people like to use like metal field centers from uh, companies like Stay Classy. I think those are really pretty too, but the uh, the official ones just do something different for me, you know? I like being 100% official. It feels good. Uh, these are just some of the field centers that I have, again, in these little one-touch cases to really separate them so they don't just blend in with my deck box or something like that. Gives them a little bit more girth so they don't just, uh, you know, blend in with everything else. Before we start talking about decks, what else belongs on the battlefield? Well, you gotta keep track of your life points, and there's a couple ways that Yu-Gi-Oh players do that. One of the more notorious ones that I get made fun of whenever I play other card games is the fact that Yu-Gi-Oh players use calculators. And not just any calculator, Yu-Gi-Oh players like to use 
graphing calculators. This is a TI-84 Texas Instrument Calculator. Um, and a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh players use these bulky graphing calculators like this. There's not a lot of calculations we're doing, you know? The most basics we're doing is 8,000 life points by 8,000, right? And you're keeping track of it. Not that keeping track of four-digit numbers is really difficult, but when you have a calculator in front of you, it makes it a lot easier when I can just subtract, you know, 1,500 from it and it just shows I have 6,500 to my opponent's 8,000. I do this with Magic the Gathering too, funny enough. I always put 2020, and everybody likes to laugh at me when I play with that. It's much better than having just a random D20, you know, in the corner, and then me knocking it over, losing track of life. Now I keep track of yours too. I get other card games can laugh it up, but like, you know, when you have a prizing system like Pokemon, I guess you don't have the luxury of using this technology like this. Along the side here are all actually official Konami dice. These are all the um, the card type dice here. I got an entire set of these from when um, Remote Duels first came around. I did an invitational that they had and they sent me a full little set of these. Uh, you have the counter trap and equip spell card here. What's another one here? There's another trap one, continuous trap card. I'm not gonna pull all of them out here, but there's one for every card type, you know? You got the ritual here, field spell here. It's got every single card type here and it actually just houses perfectly right nestled in between the calculator in the, uh, the little crevice of the case here. Actually kind of funny because these dice are a little bit larger than your normal dice, but it just happens to fit perfectly the full set. So I'm really happy with that. Necessary token, uh, an important thing to note is that if you're playing an official tournament, you're not gonna be able to have any non-Yu-Gi-Oh cards in here uh, because they will be considered part of your deck. So whenever I go to like a YC or something, I take them out, but uh, the only things on the side here are like just a couple of nice, I don't even know what these are, honestly. They're like anime cards. I don't know if somebody can probably tell me what they're from here. They're not worth too much, but I use them as tokens. This is a Gamega Kill. Uh, pretty nice, pretty nice. I have another one here, Kurumi from Data Live. This is a white shorts card here. I just like the way they look, man. It gives a little bit more character to the calculator case here. I got my Kasia ID in the back. Uh, you know, token in the front. That's everything that sits in my calculator case. Let me talk about the calculator case itself. This is an Ultra Reality Games fake leather case. I've had this thing for years now, man. Honestly, years. I've only seen one other person with this exact calculator case, but this thing has served me so well. Got this from back in the day when I used to work with Alter Reality Games when they were still doing the Circuit Series. That's not around anymore, <laughs> but hey, this is a nice little momentum that I like to carry with me. You cannot find this ARG calculator case anymore, but you can find one similar to it. Uh, any calculator case that's gonna hold a TI-84 is gonna be able to have these little flaps in the corner here to be able to give you a little bit of personalization to your setup. In an official tournament setting, keep in mind you're not gonna be able to use this calculator setup. You're not allowed to use calculators for YCSs. I like to use them in the earlier rounds as long as your opponent's okay with that. Um, it's a great way to keep track of both players' life points to make sure there's no discrepancies. If you are in a YCS setting and you want to be safe, always use the pen and paper because pen and paper does not lie. Right, so when I'm sitting down at a table, these are things that always come out with me. My play mat always comes out first, my calculator case is always with me, as well as my field center. I feel naked without these. Now that we have the groundwork laid out, let's talk about the deck and uh, where we're storing it. I've gone through many different deck boxes in my days and I've settled on ones that I really like the most. The ones that I've settled on recently are these anime double deck boxes. I get a lot of questions on where I get these bad boys uh, and how much they are and stuff like that. These are like more a collectible kind of deck box, I wanna say. The brand that most of these boxes are from is called Broccoli. You can look up Broccoli anime double deck boxes and try to find ones that you like. This one here is Canon. Uh, I've never watched this anime, but I just really like the look of the box. You crack it open here. I got a couple cards in here. Uh, they come out. Nice little flaps, whole thing in here. They normally have um, dividers. I think I'm missing one of the dividers, but here's one of the ones in here. Nice Canon double deck box divider. I will say it's not the easiest thing to store cards in. Sometimes, you know, the cards, they, they get moving around in here. It's a little spooky, but uh, it is just the nicest way to store my cards. I like it the most, and I think it looks the cleanest. Like I said, I also get a lot of questions on these. This is one of the ones I have. It's Canon. Another one that I have is, uh, and actually, it's not broccoli. It's just unbranded. I, I don't even know the name of this deck box here. Don't look at the feet. <laughs> but this is a nice one here too. I just like the green color on it. I was storing the Sun Avalon deck in here for a bit. Quite nice, quite nice. But yeah, these are normally called broccoli anime double deck boxes. I really like the way they look. And um, they're actually a little bit expensive too if you uh, want to try to find some of the rarer ones. Another one that turns heads is this gem tech box here. This is the takeout deck box. Kind of modeled after a uh, Chinese takeout box. Definitely one of my favorite ones here. It's gonna be hard to pick up the light. It says, thank you. 
engraved on the one. Thank you, Gem. Have a nice day. I'm having a great one. This is a single player deck box. Uh, gem accessories definitely is one of the leading when it comes to any accessories in general. I, I get sent stuff from uh, Brandon a lot, but he does incredible work with all of his accessories. Everything stands out and it's all extremely well made. This is one of their deck boxes that they made. Another one that I actually have in front of me here is the, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! Black Market gem deck box here. Uh, this double deck box model is something that Gem uses a lot uh, and it's one that is quite spacious, dude. It's got a lot of space in here. Nice, you know, kind of it's so hard to see with the light here, but this is kind of like a, uh, I don't want to say engraved is not the right word, but some kind of design here. Got enough to store a uh, whole commander deck here as well as the side deck. And then also in here, they have a little dice tray down in the bottom there. Uh, it really just everything in one little home here. Nice little box. Compared to my other double deck box, it is a little bit bigger. These things are uh, really bulky and they don't have much give. Uh, but if you have the space in your backpack, it definitely is the way to go. Uh, Jim has a lot of different designs for these double deck boxes here. This is just one of my favorite ones with the gray. Uh, I quite like this one a lot. Even if you want to keep it simple, one of the ones that I like a lot are these Ultimate Guard Sidewinders. He's super small, super slim, can hold literally maybe one deck inside of here. But uh, it's super durable and protective too. So if you're looking for something simple, I do recommend these little Ultimate Guard. These are called Sidewinder deck boxes. I like these ones quite a lot. So, so what's in the box? Well, it's always a deck, right? This isn't a whole deck I have here. I have some goat cards in here. But uh, one of the main things we got to protect our cards with are card sleeves. What do I use? I actually do get this question a lot about what kind of card sleeves and stuff I use. Don't worry. I'm going to share with you guys right now. Take notes. One of the sleeves that I used to use religiously were player's choice sleeves. I used to preach about these sleeves to high heaven. Player's Choice, or PC as it's more colloquially known, uh, has been probably one of the top dogs for sleeves for years, up until recently. You see a lot of people actually talk about Player's Choice sleeves, the new ones or the old ones. These old ones are worth their weight in gold. Besides the obvious appearance difference with the sleeves, there is a difference in quality control for sure. These sleeves were printed years ago here, back when uh, Player's Choice had their old factory. From what I understand, one of their old factories, uh, either broke down or something happened to it and they had to redo everything from scratch. You couldn't get PC sleeves for a period of time at all. They just didn't exist because they weren't in production. When they came back in production, they came with a new look and actually quite frankly, just a new quality. And it's not good. The quality of these sleeves is, is just really not good. A lot of them are super miscut and unusable. You know, I actually, this is from a display I have. I'm willing to bet money that these sleeves are miscut and unusable. A lot of players will also just say they genuinely feel different too. It's a different look. Ready? Moment of truth here. <laughs> so it's not that egregious for these ones here, but there's always this lip at the top here. And for some of the sleeves that I own, the lip is just unusable. Like the, the sleeves are so bad. This is actually a pretty nice pack here, I guess. One of the things I really like about Player's Choice sleeve is uh, it's not a matte back. It is a glossy back, so it feels really smooth to the touch. Uh, it is extremely clear on the front here. You're able to see all your cards perfectly fine. Uh, some of the sleeves have like this foggy kind of look to the front, which is good when you don't want any glare on your cards, but sometimes you just really want to appreciate uh, the color and everything about it. Player's Choice really does that in spades. They really give you a clear look at your card here. Quite nice feel to it, but the problem is with these sleeves is they do not last long. I think anybody will tell you that player's choice sleeves are only really good for one tournament. Uh, it's the best tournament you'll ever play. You'll feel like a god when you're doing your graveyard slide, but uh, oh boy, do they get dirty real quick. You can find these new branded player's choice sleeves with this girl in particular at any of your local game store. These ones here with this old uh, style and format here, good luck. You can probably find them for maybe $30 a pack on secondary market. But uh, like I said, these things are worth their weight in gold. And we will never have a sleeve that is as good as Player's Choice White's OG. But that's okay. What do I use now, though? I don't use Player's Choice anymore. I've had such a bad time with their quality control and actually getting consistent use of sleeves that it's just not worth it for me. I did find a new favorite sleeve, though, not too long after, though. That is the Ultimate Guard Katana White. This is what I use for everything right now. I use it, actually, it's on this morphing jar here, funny enough. Uh, this is a Katana White sleeve. It is a matte back, but it is not really, like, a super matte. It's, it's kind of like, it's not a super matte. I sound stupid. It is a matte back sleeve, but it's not rough like sandpaper. It's got a pretty nice front. It's a little bit foggy, which was one of my problems, like I said before, but um, the durability of the sleeves and the feel of it is amazing. If I could use player's choice sleeves for more than one tournament, I probably would, but my hands get so clammy and dirty when I play that I have to use a matte back sleeve. Otherwise, I will just not last maybe three rounds. Katana sleeves have really given me that ability to actually play sleeves for an entire tournament. I love the way these feel. Uh, they're super nice, uh, and they actually... They just look good too, actually. I remember talking to one of the reps at Ultimate Guard uh, about these sleeves here, 
And one of the main things about it was the, the precision cut for the sleeves here. Uh, obviously, Player's Choice doesn't share those same ideals. But um, the one thing about Katana sleeves is it doesn't matter which pack of sleeves you buy, they're always going to be the exact same cut. Super important when you know you have a deck that is more than 60 cards total and you've got to put them together. There's been times where I've had two packs of Player's Choice sleeves where they're completely different cuts and I just couldn't sleeve the deck with them. Katana doesn't have that problem. Like a sword, they are all about the precision cuts as well as the quality. That's what they told me, at least. I like these sleeves a lot. I recommend anybody give it a shot if you're looking for a new sleeve brand to try. Another one that I would definitely give it a shot is there's new Dragon Shield sleeves, which are uh, dual matte sleeves, they're called. Black on the front, color on the back. They actually feel really good. I'm not a fan of the black on the front sleeves, but uh, some people might enjoy them there. Something to try out. They also have a lot of cool colors for Dragon Shields, like Tangerine. They have Eucalyptus, like the soap. A lot of really cool options. You have your World Championship Qualifier sleeves that you can definitely sleeve up. Uh, I don't use these things ever. I hate them. I think most people hate them. These sleeves, if you thought I talked about player's choice getting dirty real quick, these sleeves take that and, and triple that problem. It's so bad. These sleeves do have a really unique look to them being just like, you know, official Yu-Gi-Oh sleeves. I got these ones at Nationals this year, and I got these ones for that uh, the, the remote duel event that I played in along with those dice. Although these sleeves do look cool, they are really shitty quality. They're so bad, actually. However, if you take these and you double sleeve them, it actually doesn't end up that bad. Um, there's some over sleeves that are called character guards, specifically. I'll throw a picture up if you guys uh, want to get them yourself. I always get a lot of questions on them. Character guards are really good for double sleeving. So um, you can double sleeve these, and then they don't get dirty. It's really just the outer sleeve, so you can get some multi-purpose use out of them. However, as a standalone sleeve, these ones fucking, they, they blow, bro. They really do suck. But they do look cool. I will give them credit. They do look really cool. I actually think, guys, we checked all of our boxes in. Started with the groundwork. I taught you guys about the play mats that I like to use. We went on, and we, then we talked about the uh, the heart of the, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh board, the field center. Pair that with a lovely way to keep track of life points. I like to keep track with a calculator. Where are we storing the cards? Nicest double deck box around here, this canon double deck box. And then how are we protecting them, man? Either Katana White, Player's Choice if you have them, you're nice like that. But yeah, I think that's just about everything, guys. You may be able to make the exact same combos as someone. You may be able to play even the exact same deck as someone. But the one thing that is uniquely yours is your setup. Us as humans already have a unique way to present ourselves through the clothes we wear. Why don't we take that and apply it to trading card games? Treat your Yu-Gi-Oh setup the same way you would treat your wardrobe. Right, I know it's a little bit of a different topic, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video today, and I hope you guys learned something. Let me know what your Yu-Gi-Oh setup looks like down below. What's the most unique part of your setup? Do you have any little trinkets you bing by that you always keep on your board? I know a lot of people do that. I like to keep my things simple. But I'm curious what makes your setup yours. Let me know down in the comment section below, guys. I'm dying to hear. If you guys like the video, be sure to like, comment, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.